Hey everybody, it's Tuesday, October 15th, and you're here at the weekly community call for chaos. I'm Elizabeth, it's good to see everybody here. I hope you're all having a wonderful day, feeling happy, feeling good, feeling healthy. That would be great. Um, if you would like to add your name and tell us what book you're reading or what you've just read, uh, that would be great because I'm always looking for another book to read or at least put on my shelves and not ever read, but look at a lot. Um, yeah, I used to feel guilty about that. And then someone said a book, your bookshelf is like your wine cellar. Like you can just have the books and it's okay. And that was very liberating to me. I did not feel guilty about not reading anymore. <clears throat> City of Girls, okay. ooh, that looks Project Hail Mary, Starting Wool. Fun fact, I have the signed edition the omnibus wool because i know hugh howie so oh i don't know him know him but yeah <laughs> you just didn't know him so i'm gonna go with your first statement you're so. in a yeah. supper club together as far as i know yeah uh, like <laughs> is he coming over this weekend <laughs> maybe i mean if i can fit him in i don't know <laughs> uh i'm reading this which is really weird because it's in first person present tense and it's very hard to get get used to that so it's all like, I ran to the door, but I couldn't get it open. So I blah, blah, blah. And then, or I, I run to, sorry, I run to the door. So it's just kind of weird, but it's interesting. Uh, I don't know. Do like Sacred mushroom in the cross. That sounds good. Wow. Is this like a nonfiction thing, Callie, right here? The food lab? Yes, it's like a cookbook, but it's more like the theories behind cooking is like just like how to combine different flavors and more so yeah. than recipes. So a little Alton Brown sort of twist to it. It's a cool it's book. Like, like the science yeah. of cooking. Yeah. yeah. I like books like that much more than cookbooks because I just like to learn the rules so I can improvise. I don't like following a recipe. I cannot not follow a recipe. I must follow a recipe. I have no sense of uh, improvisation there, none at all. <clears throat> it will not turn out well. well. My sense of improvisation probably makes me the cooking equivalent of a three chord rock star, so. That's all right. You can do a lot with three chords. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so the first thing on the agenda is the future of metrics models. Just a little light topic, should be real quick to talk about. Yeah. Somebody, I'm so, going to let Matt do this and run with oh, it. Somebody can help me here. I was like, ah, first item on the agenda. I have to remember. Okay. What, do you want to do you want to do these other ones? Because these are quicker. And um, we can come back to oh, somebody can just kind of help me out. That was also at that meeting. That's all I need. Just some support. So okay. So basically, a lot of this stems from the audit that we're doing on metrics to start. So let me just, I think, start there first. So we have, say, 85 metrics right now that we're, as you know, doing an audit on and looking at retemplating them, and which has opened up a whole world of issues around the metrics that we have, um, just in terms of um, like how well some of them are written uh, or not well some of them are written. Um, and just kind of the questions on focusing on a core set of metrics and maybe not always looking just to expand the 85 to 95 and 95 to 105, but really kind of reflecting on the metrics themselves. And so we've been talking about this for a while now. Uh, and uh, one of the first things that Elizabeth and I did last week was we took a look at all of the metrics. It's in the spreadsheet. And we took a look at whether the metric was um, used in a metric model or whether the metric was used in a practitioner guide or whether the metric was used in um, like the EI badging for projects or events kind of as a way to just understand where these metrics reside in the list of 85 I think maybe there were 30 or so Elizabeth that didn't necessarily have a home and at least with respect to those things that I had said all right, so we're just trying to figure out what might be the metrics that we want to put forward on the page. Um, 
the proposal is that if if a metric is really not maintained, uh, poorly worded, not part of that list that I had just mentioned, that we archive that metric. Um, the link for the metric would not go away. The like the GitHub page would stay. It just wouldn't be um, centered as prominently on the web page as it is now. So that's with respect to the metrics, and I can stop there for a second. Yeah, Sean. My one question about archiving is, and it's, this is very nuanced, is it the right signal? I think we're saying it's not being maintained, but we're also saying this is still a chaos metric. Am I getting that right? Yeah, I think so. That's a good question. Um, I understand the question. I'm not sure I have a great answer. Maybe somebody else has some thoughts on it. Because right, like it's not on the web page. I think Go what ahead. What we're Del. saying is that it's it's a metric that we defined at some point within within chaos, but you know maybe the maybe the quality isn't there. Maybe it's not as important as some of our other metrics, and we've decided not to maintain it anymore. And I would say that it's it's not unlike lots of lots of open source projects. So with when I worked at VMware, we had a whole sunsetting project uh, process around open source projects, where there's nothing wrong with the project necessarily. And, you know, maybe, maybe it was something that, you know, people were using it at some point, but now we think it's, it's just not something that we're going to continue to work on. And so, so we archive it and, you know, put a notice at the top. And I see this as being similar for metrics. It was something that we worked on at some point, but we've decided that for whatever reason, we're just not going to, to move forward with it. I wonder if it's more like um, release support within a project than it is um, like sunsetting a project. I can see, so my concern would be if we start sunsetting metrics and people have built software or analysis around the definitions that exist as imperfect as they are, are we pulling the rug out from folks who are expecting a certain baseline of metrics from us to, to continue to exist. So would a different approach be to say that the metrics that we choose to maintain right now would be like version 2.0 metrics and the other metrics could be left like at a version 1.0 and that would communicate. I worry about communicating that we will take metrics away because I think that's counter to the expectations people have. Yeah, but I don't think that's what we're saying and I, um, so I think that the version one, version two of the metrics, I think that's nuanced enough that it would be very difficult to communicate. I think it would be hard for people to understand. Um, whereas I think it's easier for people to understand we're just not moving forward with this metric. That doesn't mean, that doesn't mean people can't use it. That doesn't mean anything's wrong with them already using it. It's just that we're not going to build on it moving forward. Are, are those, the, is that the nature of the decisions that we're making? I'm sorry, I missed a bunch of meetings last week. So um, is the nature of the decision that we're making is that we're not going to support it? Um, or is it, so, or is it more like we have 188 metrics or whatever, and we're going to choose to maintain like these 55 or 60 we're, we're going to maintain right now, but we're just not, we don't have the time to update the other ones. I'm trying to understand if, if we're making a decision because we don't think this metric no longer has a great utility or because we just have so many metrics to maintain that we have to choose. So the, the maintenance burden is extremely high. So there are on these documents and they are really core assets of the chaos project in addition to software. So particularly when we started you remember, like it was about building the metrics and building the yeah. software. And yeah. I, these, the metrics side of this equation has, has really become pretty broken and pretty brittle going through this audit process. So, um, so the, in part of this is, is we just have to kind of rein it in a little bit and think about what we want to show to people that is of high quality. 
so so yeah part of it is maintenance um particularly there there aren't many people meaning i could probably count on one hand that are working to actively maintain metrics at this point no i, I think the effort that you and elizabeth had described uh, maybe a month ago now is really the first concerted effort since we sort of restructured our working groups maybe 12 days yeah. ago. And I think one of the things we're discovering as part of that is some of the metrics are just not very good. They're, they're all over the place in the sense of yeah. the question doesn't align with the description, doesn't align with the filters. Um, they're clearly, some of them were clearly uh, contributed by an individual who had some business interest on that week and they took yeah. the time to write it. And right. Left. Um, and so part of this audit is that, like cleaning. Yeah. And right. so this is where, and if, so everything would still be available. We just really want to, on the website, put forward the ones that are well written and tell yeah. nice them. And if yeah. somebody wants to, to, um, say like whatever let's just say we land on 50 and somebody's like but this 51st one is really great and honestly what we've been talking about is great then you whomever you might be <laughs> write It'll it make it write it well make it happen and write are you well. yeah. why this is part of that group um and so that's that's really a lot of the motivation here yeah, and I think too the other side effect that this has is, you know, we we know that people get overwhelmed by the amount of of metrics that that we have. And so I think paring it down and focusing on some of the some of the ones that are higher quality and that are more important, I think also helps our users think about where where to put their where to put their energy and where to put their where to put their focus. And how would the how would the not maintained metrics be available on the website, but less focused? Well, they'd still be searchable. Uh -huh. But, that'd but be they wouldn't be in lists. Is that the yeah exactly? They wouldn't be kind of in that. You know how we have the mm -hmm. current like categories, or you can click on like all metrics. Yep. In that list there. And we wouldn't get rid of any of the links. We wouldn't get rid of any of the repos. None of that would, would change. I'm trying to decide if I'm having a hoarder mentality and I just don't want to get rid of any of the things. Or well, if, so then my, my if I worry about people linking to something and then not being able to find it in the future and the then not trusting it. us. Okay. The link, the link resides. That stays. And if it's the hoarder mentality, then I would say, no, I, it's not good. I, no. I give you the 30 metrics that we want and I <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. maintain them. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not sure, I'm not sure what my principal motivation is because even these people who define, depend on metrics are, um, in, in some ways, I, I can't identify them. I don't know who they are. Well, so. and, if, and if we, we talked about this too, like if there's always the chance that something goes away and somebody's like, where'd the such and such go? Then obviously right. that's a good signal that maybe this is one that we should consider right. bringing back, you know? Yeah. Okay. I follow it. Thanks for it. Thanks for the discussion. Yeah, yeah sure. Um, and then, okay. So then now on to the metrics models discussion. Um, somebody help me out here. Where, where did we let somebody lead me off? <laughs> I, I can maybe make a make a go of it. Um, I think so some of this is just my my thinking about this and may not reflect what we what we talked about last time. But I don't for the most part, I don't feel like the metrics models ever achieved what we wanted them to achieve, which was here's here's kind of a canonical collection of metrics that's how you measure a Thing. Because I think one of the things that we've realized as we've developed more of these metrics models is that there are there are so many ways to think about a lot of these concepts and there's no kind of right way to include, you know, certain certain metrics and not include other metrics when you're talking about, you know, something complex like like viability, for example. I think I think one of the things that we learned when Gary created the 
five viability metrics models, um, which, which by the way, I'm a huge fan of uh, because I do think that they help people, they help people think through a particular topic. In this case, in this case, viability. But I don't think that the metrics models are really the way to do that. I think that we've evolved some of our thinking with, you know, if you think about what the practitioner guides have done for for new users, where we've packaged things in more of a more of a guide format. So here's here's how you think about a thing. Here's how you might improve it. Now the practitioner guides are geared very much towards new users. So I don't think the metrics models like that they shouldn't move into practitioner guides. They shouldn't have anything to do with the practitioner guides, frankly. But I think maybe we need something else that's not a metrics model because I just don't think that format has really worked for, for very many people. Um, but maybe we need some expert guides on some of the topics that we have metrics models for. So things like like viability, for example, because that was a, you know kind of a popular popular one. Um, or it may be popular just because I, I really like it. So I talk about it a lot, but, um, but I just feel like the, the metrics models haven't really achieved what we wanted to. And a side effect of that is that they are just things that are really complex and really now difficult to maintain. So we get into the same concerns that we talked about with the metrics, which is why I think we're kind of having this discussion sort of wrapped up together is that. We have a lot of stuff to maintain. We have very few people working on this type of metrics and metrics model maintenance. And so maybe maybe we need to archive the metrics models in a similar way that we just talked about for the metrics. And when people want to put together collections of metrics, maybe we encourage them to do that as a blog post or as some type of some type of guide, some Something that's more more narrative and and maybe less less structured, like the the metrics models. I think the structure just hasn't particularly worked well for people. I don't think I don't think people get a lot of value out of the metrics models compared to the amount of time and effort it takes to create them and maintain them. I don't know, Matt, if you want to add anything to that. Um, no, I'll, we'll see if there's feedback. But that helped me remember what we talked about. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you. If, if I think about where the metrics models have the most significant impact, it is in the Compass software system because they operationalize them fairly systematically there. And, and so that's, that's a fact. So I don't want to, I, I think what's being, what is, is, um, are we suggesting not maintaining them and leaving them? What's the recommendation here for the metrics models? Well, so that's kind of a, it's interesting because <clears throat> Elizabeth and I also started going through the metrics models. Um, there, there is, believe it or not. So there is a metric model that is built on zero published metrics. I believe it. <laughs> so like, we, we come when did I write it? <laughs> you remember the idea behind the models was like identify the existing chaos metrics and maybe put in a few more that might help push us to develop those metrics right. in the future. And there is a whole model that has none, zero published metrics. Wow. wow. Yes, 100% zero. And so like, that's not even that extreme of an example because we only have a handful of metrics models. So, <laughs> and a lot of them are, are built um s similar to that so i i think to your question I, I, the approach would be like what we've done with the metrics of archiving them or putting them in the attic but maintaining everything like in terms of links and all that kind of stuff around them again just okay. not having them as prominent on the website and just a disclaimer at the top that says this was some you know this is uh, something that we did in the past it's no longer being maintained you may find this useful. Okay, that makes sense. Um, and to Don's point, I agree, or Don's point too on the structure, like it is overly structured. And if people wanted to do a blog post, that seems like a really great way of saying, here's a couple metrics that I was using, whomever you might be, to address a particular question. Um, and I also believe I don't have a huge problem archiving them either. I was 
really the proponent of them in the first place. Um, you know, like kind of bringing them forward. And I, I, I never, we, we couldn't be where we're at today without having gone through this process and kind of understanding what the challenges are in, in bringing metrics together like this. Um, I know they're unconnected to the practitioner guys, but kind of thinking about how we look at metrics as a collection. Um, anyway, it, it's, I think it's been a great process. It's just not something that we necessarily need to maintain right now. Yeah, okay. This is sort of easier to digest because the, like there's one significant known dependency and if we're maintaining it for that group, it's just done a lot of really great work, then I think yes. Yes, this makes all tons of sense. It's just, it's just not as prominent <clears throat> on our web page. It's just not something yeah. we really push forward or, or produce yeah. more necessarily. Right. Georg yep. set his hand up. I'm just going to interrupt and let Georg speak. So thinking back to when we started the metric models, what I remember the first spark of inspiration came from looking at the evolution of an issue and identifying different points in time where something happens on the issue and the metrics related to that from from time to open, time to close, time to first response, from that that whole evolution or life cycle uh, of the issue. And I, I remember there was a, a visual that guided that along where every segment had its own metric associated with that in that life cycle. And I, I really liked how the metric model create a comprehensive view. If you're looking at metrics, here are all of them. If, if you're looking at issues, here are all the metrics related to it and how they correlate, how, how they interact, how they relate to one another. Um, is that what you also remember as the spark for the metric models initially? I do remember that, like vaguely. And I don't, I was who put that together? Was it Yahui? Yeah, I think so. so. I was while you were talking, I was trying to look in the like meeting minutes. Probably way at the bottom and maybe going back. Yeah, I'm on page forty four at the moment. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. I do remember that. And so there's been a lot of rigor that has gone into some of the metric models that I think there is a lot of a lot to be taken from them and getting rid of metric models I am concerned that we lose that all of that thought process that has gone into it um I, what I also heard was the idea to create like blog posts or reports of here's how I've used these metrics in this combination. I like that. And this was something when we started the chaos cast where we couldn't get people to write. <laughs> we, we couldn't get people to write these blog posts. So I'm hesitant to invoke that idea. Although I, I'm fully in support of it and I like it, I just don't know how well it will work based on our success in the past. And that's why we started the podcast because it was easier to get people on a call to talk about what they have been doing and how they are using metrics. Um, so I, I just wanna add that also to the discussion. But I think this is a little bit different because we're not we're not talking about the metrics models going away. We're just talking about not developing any new ones and um, archiving the ones that have already been developed so that people can continue to use them, but not actively maintaining them. And so I think I think the reason we thought maybe that someone could write a blog post instead was instead of writing a metrics model. So if someone was going to write a metrics model anyways, Instead of writing the metrics model, we would have them write up blog post and just not do any new development on, on metrics models. 
And so I, I don't know. I mean, I agree. It's really hard to get people to write, write things. This is why we're struggling with the metrics and the metrics models is because it is really hard to get people to write high quality metrics and metrics models and then maintain them over time. And this is, this is a hard problem. And I think, you know, one of, I think this is a, maybe a, a symptom of our own growth, right? The chaos community has grown so much since since the community was started. And I think now we're we're struggling to maintain all of the things that we've created over those so many, so many years. And which ones I think this is more of a discussion, and we'll also bring this into the board meeting tomorrow. But this is also a discussion of where do we want to go in the future? Where do we want the chaos project to focus its effort? Do we want people creating new metrics models? Do we want people creating guides instead, or um, you know things like things like blog posts? Do we want a bajillion metrics, or do we want to focus on high quality metrics that we think more people are going to use? So I, I feel like this is more um, more forward looking and more strategic about where we want the project as a whole to go, and where we want to focus focus our energy as we continue to grow. Yeah, my, my, my thought on blog post versus metric model is that they have a very different standing. A blog post is written and then it starts aging and it withers away. With a metric model, what we have, we have an indexed catalog of here are compositions of metrics for specific use cases. And that has a different standing. And we're also in the conversation about standardizing and ISO standards. We're not standardizing metrics. We're standardizing metric models. So I have a couple of comments. One is, um, one was on the, the point that you brought up on kind of the con metrics models on the connections of issues, Georg. Like that was a long, as this is a great example. That was a long time ago and it never, we don't have it. So like nobody, I don't think we have something on, on issues, like a metric model that you talked about. So, so like nobody yeah. did it. So good idea, but it's already been lost, the idea. Um, and so like our concern of maintaining that idea, kind of that ship sailed a while ago. <laughs> so, um, the second is on with respect to the ISO standards. Um, so again, that's you know that's falling just to a few people, right? To push this through, and it's a lot of work, and it's a lot of a lot of writing again, and the process is slow. It's very unrewarding, and as one of the people who is kind of been handed that process and is working on it. Um, I don't particularly think it's that useful. At this rate, we'll get like one metric model standardized in the next year. So <laughs> it's just, there's just so many hours I have in a day to yeah, maintain for... metrics and metrics models and try to ISO standardize them. Yeah, and I mean, if I, people think... want to help, they can, but they're just not. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. I just and, and I need I, to rein it in. Yeah, well, and I think I think the impetus for that standard is not now that we're on a standardization. I think we've covered all things metrics and metrics models in the history of chaos now. So flag this for a podcast. Yeah. Uh, I, I, think, I think I think I think I think the Asia Pacific group is the group that really has an industrial need for these kinds of standards, and and so I think asking if if they still have the energy to drive it might be the right thing to do because there is less appetite for ISO standardization in the European and North American economies. It's just less central here. And that's where the standardization came from. So like it may not be, I, I say, I agree. We, there's only so many hours in a day, um, but let's maybe ask the Asia Pacific group if it is something that they think is important and can devote some energy to. Yeah, that's fair. And 
I mean, that'll that will continue to raise Georg's point of if we, you know, but I, but I mean, the other the other reality is is like to Don's point, to Georg's point, to Sean's point, but to Don's point, we're just archiving the metric models. So there's there's they still are, you know, yeah. NASA, the chaos project. They are. Oh, no. Yeah, I was just speaking to the no, no, no. ISO standardization. Oh, no, no, but this is if we have the models because they are yeah. what we're actually standardizing. To Georg, we could still, I mean, if somebody wants to pick it up on, you know, to, to really kind of push forward that ISO standard work, the model still exists. It it really does. Um, there's a there's a route to point to. It's still a chaos asset. It's just not something we're putting forward front and center. And I mean, honestly, if somebody was to get one of their models all the way through as an ISO standard, well, then I think we'd cross that bridge when we come to it. We'd be like, this is a a collection of metrics that we argue as a as a way of um, standardizing how you think about whatever it might be project engagement or something like that. Would we still offer a path to create a new metric model? So I understand the proposal is to encourage someone who is doing something interesting with the collection of metrics to write a blog post about it and which doesn't need to go through the rigorous process and require all the resources from everyone else reviewing it, et cetera, et cetera. But then if they want to take it further and add it to the collection of metric models and get it that stamp of approval from the chaos community that this is a metric model, would we still offer that as a path? Uh, so I. Don, correct me on the blog post, but I mean, it, it, if somebody wanted to propose a new metric, is that what you were saying, Georg, as a blog post? I think we would still support a new metric if somebody wanted to bring it forward, had an art, a reason why they wanted to bring it forward. It would still be templated. Did you say metric or metric model for a blog post, Georg? I was thinking about the metric model, the Baturgia risk model that I had shared that I was interested in building the metric model out for. And so what I want to know is, is that path, are we closing that path to create a metric model in chaos? Because I'm less interested in just writing a blog post about it. We already have that. My next interest is to put in the work and get that as a metric, at the, as a metric model. Well, I mean, I think that's what we need to decide as a community is whether we continue to whether we continue to do new new models. And I don't think that that decision has been made. But I think that the other the other option would be some sort of guide around risk, not a practitioner guide, because those are those are geared towards in you know kind of new new people, but maybe some sort of expert guide, case study guide. I think we would need to also think about how it differs from the viability stuff. Um, because I see risk and, and some of the stuff that you're doing around risk as um, being very similar to viability. And maybe we can maybe we can combine it with some of the stuff that Gary's already done around viability and do some kind of risk and viability guide. I, I don't know. I don't know what it looks like. Here's what I would here's here's what I would propose. I think we've we've talked about this a lot. I think it's a really really complex topic. Given that we don't have that much time left in the meeting, what I would encourage people to to do is to think about it, and maybe we have more discussion. Well, we'll have more discussion on this in the in the board meeting uh, tomorrow for those of us that happen to be on the board. Um, but I think we probably need to tee this up again in this this meeting for for more discussion after people have had some time to think about it and digest it and um, think about what it might what it might look like. Fair enough. Okay. I'm going to say we should move on because we only have 10 minutes left. Um, thank you, everybody. I'm glad we did put that first. Matt, sorry to put you on the spot so early in the meeting, but yeah. we definitely needed the time for that. That is not a quick topic to discuss. 
It was so, not. No. Um, okay. Thank you, everybody. It's it's very important for chaos to talk about this stuff. Um, we'll move on quickly. These are just mostly reminders. Um, chaos con updates. We are now locked in for January 30th. Ooh, ooh. Uh, the website is finished. Registration is like 99% finished. I just need to give it one more look over, maybe have somebody else check it before we announce it. But, um, that will be probably this week. We'll announce everything. I think that's, that's fair to say. So, um, save the date if you're planning to go to FOSTEM, come a little early, two days, three days early, and um, yeah, come to CASCON. Um, anybody want to say anything else about that, about CASCON? I don't know what we can say, what we've decided. Okay, CASCON, I confirmed that the hotel received the first 50% of the money, awesome. and so yes, awesome. we are locked in, locked in. Awesome. I did not see a response to your email, Georg, so from Louise. So I just assumed since that was last week, I just assumed that I didn't yeah. hear. So no news is good news kind of thing. Awesome. OK, any questions about that? KSCon committee, we uh, today is a project manager meeting, so we're not meeting today. But if we do need to meet, we can do it async. We're pretty good at that I think, in Slack. So I just if for anybody that's helping kind of like financially with ChaosCon, is everything going smoothly from LFX as far as you know? I got the reimbursement already. Okay. Just making sure. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Of course, let me know if you don't, but <laughs> Yep, it's already taken care of. Okay. Oh, just the sure. fastest ever. I think it took two days. Oh, okay. Wow. Well, fantastic. <laughs> well, wonders never cease. That's awesome. Okay. All right. So for the for everybody else, look look for more updates coming soon. But that's the that's the big one right there. Um, the next thing on our list is I wanted to give a shout out to Eddie Inca and to Gift and to Desmond, which I'm not sure. I thought Gift was on the call, but I don't see her now um they have done a fantastic job i just want to oh man you don't even know so the badging application process for dei badging has been the same since we originally started this like years ago and it's it was not easy for our poor uh <clears throat> event organizers it was a lot of hoops to jump through and um the idea was that this would be like a starting point and that we would smooth that process out and then we never had the resources to do it. <laughs> so, so I just want to give a huge shout out to Arika Desmond and Gift who really pushed it over the finish line. So now when someone applies for a DEI event badge, it is a super smooth, really nice process. Um, only requires like one step in the middle, which is to make sure they're logged into GitHub and the rest just magically happens. So huge shout out to them for the, the work on that. Just really fantastic job and we can't thank you enough. And I'm sure our event organizers cannot thank you enough as well. So yay, hats off to you all. We appreciate you so much. Um, we have been getting so many applications. Uh, I think we're gonna need to do another round of um, reviewers. They're yeah. just coming in so quickly now. <laughs> I think maybe maybe we've shot ourselves in the foot by making it so easy. Because <laughs> um, yeah, we're just getting a ton. So um, yeah, maybe Adi Inc and I, maybe you, you and I can meet to kind of talk about how we have this whole process set up with reviewers. And I don't know, maybe we need to revise some things. Um, I don't know, we'll see. We're, but, we're uh, still but, approaching yeah. 200 badged events. Yeah, 200 badged events. Um, we can actually look right now and see how many there are. Just curious. Yeah, 186. Um, well, we are getting what's, what's currently come in. I think we'll get to 200 pretty quickly. Yeah. So, um, so thank you to also the reviewers who have been reviewing. I know it's a lot of work. We'll we'll work to ease that up a little bit um, by hosting a few more of those orientation sessions and encouraging folks to just be a reviewer. <clears throat> Um, any questions on that or comments from anybody? That that program has worked really, really well. <laughs> so. 
Yeah, and it's a lot of work. Um, Eddie Inca has been doing a fantastic job. Um, I mean, just amazing. So thank you so much, Eddie Inca. You're, you're making it happen. Eddie Inca does all of the assigning the reviewers, running all the badges. She also leads the software development group. So she's the one that's been getting the software side of things, the badging bot side of things moving. So yeah, she's doing a lot. <laughs> so thank you so much. I have to say, I, I absolutely love seeing events get or get um, really excited about the fact that they just got their badge and they start talking about it on social media. And it's just it's just really heartwarming just to see these these events um, talk about our badges and get really excited about them. So so thank you. Those of you who've worked hard on it, it's, I think it's a great program. Love it. It really is. Okay, uh, a few uh, reminders. Uh, we have a lot, actually, not more than a few <laughs> reminders, everybody. Please don't forget to fill out the community survey. Here's the link. It won't take you very long. It will, um, everything is anonymous. We are going to end the survey pretty soon. So just take a minute, let us know how you're doing in chaos and how we can be better. Um, and maybe if we're doing anything right, we'll continue to do that. <laughs> so um, just please take that really would mean a lot to us if you would, even if you're a newcomer, we still value your opinion very highly. So please, please, please don't think you need to be here a certain amount of time. If you're even if you're kind of easing off the chaos project, if you're moving on to other things, we still would love your feedback. So please take a minute to do that. Uh, and then this next one, oy. Y'all know how I feel about this, but um, this is going to be a little bit nuts for a little few weeks here. So just keep an eye on your calendars. Again, it's we tie the different events to the different. Um, by default, their meetings are tied to U.S. Central Time, which means we will do daylight savings on November third. Um, but also there are a few events that are not tied to that so like the chaos africa events are tied to west africa time which does not adhere or um what's the word i want does not acknowledge what's the word? there's a word that i can't follow. think of right now follow yeah Comply. Implement. I, don't I don't know <laughs> they don't do it they don't do daylight savings because they are smarter than the rest of us apparently i think that's the right way to say it yeah yeah they're smarter um, and then also the Chaos Asia Pacific meetings are on um, India Standard Time. And each meeting will say it right here. This meeting follows daylight saving time for this time zone. So if you're confused, don't so the, feel like So the important alone. thing to realize for those of you who are in places uh, not uh, the US is that the problem starts on the 27th. So it's the problem doesn't start when the US changes. The problem starts when the rest of us change um, off of daylight savings and the US hasn't yet. So it means that all of our meetings are, I think effectively an hour earlier for the week of October yeah. 28th. Right, it's one week in the fall yeah. and two weeks in the spring that we're yeah. off. So the week of October 28th, for those of us that are outside of the US but change for daylight savings on the 27th then. Yeah. So it's it's just one week of confusion, but it does mean that that's, that's when the confusion starts is the week of the 28th. And also hug anyone you know who is organizing any kind of global meeting whatsoever. Like just give them a hug in this whole month because it's a it's a headache for everybody. For everybody. Um, so a hard. few other. Sorry. I just said it's so hard. This is, time zones are hard. They really are. I hate it. I hate it so much. It's, yeah, daylight savings time is dumb. I say this twice a year. I, I I'm with you, John. I say it. I, out every day through the whole year. <laughs> um, okay, so if you would like to attend All Things Open at the end of October during that week, <laughs> so who knows really what time anything is going to be going on that week, but you can just come hang out in Raleigh, North Carolina. If you would like to attend, we have free tickets. Nobody's taken any, so give me give me a shout. I'll send you a link. We have five, and then if we do happen to use those, we still get a twenty percent discount after that because they love chaos and we love them. So yeah, and we will have a booth there yeah. Good to be there. We'll also be giving away our Lego globe that we do. It's in my living room and I'm fending the children away from it, fending them off. Yes, no, no globing. Um, okay, the next one, uh, I think 
No, I'm not sure who put these on here, but it looks like some open CFPs are happening. So if you're interested in um, submitting something, here are the links for that. Yeah, just note that while they don't look like they overlap, they effectively do because it takes a really long time to get from Los Angeles to Berlin. Um, yeah, I was turns trying out. to do them both in one year and I, I couldn't make the travel happen. So I, I gave up and picked one. So if you're going to submit to the CFP, pick one. Or submit both <laughs> and, and then, I don't know. See what happens. Yeah. Time travel, <laughs> I guess. I mean, by the time the first event is over, it's actually already the next day in Europe. So it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. Get on your private jets and like this yeah. over really quick or like the, yeah, especially yeah, since most of the stuff at scale actually happens on the eighth and the ninth. The the sixth and the seventh are actually kind of like pre days. So pre -days. like if you you end up missing all the good stuff if you if you try to leave early to go to Foss backstage. And then I know we're out of time, but other quickly just or quickly other quick weekly reminders that are always on here make sure you take a look at these issue templates podcasts all of this stuff don't forget about it i will keep reminding you every week about those things even though they're not time sensitive they are still there even boring things are important things they're not boring i'm just kidding i think that's from bluey i don't know i hear my daughter saying it sometimes to her or her daughter so it must mean it's from bluey anyway have a great rest of your day, everyone. Thank you so much for this awesome discussion we had about the metrics and metrics models. And we will see you here next week. Same time, same place. Bye, everybody. See ya. Bye.